Good morning, everybody. Um, for those of you who haven't attended one of our previous webinars or met any of the entry people in person, I'm David Lees, and on the other um, image, you'll see Trent Lester, who's our platform manager in Joburg, and I'm speaking to you from uh, Westlake in Cape Town. So thanks for attending. Today, we're discussing uh, disaster recovery as a service, and I hope you can all see my screen. Trent, you can see my screen? Yes, it looks good, David. Thank you. Okay. Right. So what is DRAS? For those of you not familiar with the terminology, which is probably none of you, DRAS is a Disaster Recovery as a Service, which, as it says on the slide, allows you the opportunity to offer a solution capable of protecting against total system failure. So those of you who are <coughs> um, uh, resellers or channel uh, partners, it's a great solution to offer specifically your sort of medium to large customers and for those of you watching your IT managers, it's a great solution to uh, bulletproof your environment against disruptive events. <clears throat> what are the benefits of having a disaster recovery solution? Well, we all know that the reality in today's times is that uh, businesses basically revolve around their IT infrastructure and without, without your IT, you're unable to transact um, you're unable to follow up uh, customers' orders from your uh, suppliers. Business kind of grinds to a halt. And because IT environments are becoming more and more complex with more and more dependencies, if you do have a disruptive event, it's not easy to recover if you don't have a, a replicated environment. So traditionally, as we know, uh, larger companies have had a replicated a hot desk call center environment which cost an absolute fortune on a monthly basis, which are just set up to continuously um, synchronize with the server on their own site. And if they do have a major disruption, they, they just literally get up and go to the alternative venue and carry on processing. That's never been a scenario that's uh, affordable for small businesses, but the, um, the advent of uh, disaster recovery as a service makes that uh, a possibility at an affordable price and the fact that Iontree offers this as what we call a fully managed service means that it's very easy to implement and, and manage. Uh, I'm not going to read the slides, I always say that, but some of the benefits just to go through one or two of them. Um, human technical assistance and support, I think Iontree, one of our differentiating factors uh, for those of you who know us, is that we do have a, a local call center. We are available. You can call us. We do call you. And in fact, we a lot of our calls are unprompted by users where we actually call out to inform them that their backups are not going through or their backups are out of date or they're trying to back up more data than their package allows and um, stuff like that. So we're all, always available to talk to. Um, what else did I want to say on this slide? Have I left anything out on the terms of the benefits, Trent, that are, that's important to go into more deeply? Uh, yeah, so I'll discuss the features now, which will um, just give a more overview of how the system will work and how it will benefit you as a customer. So basically, one of the features is that we do a full system backup of your environment. That full system backup can be scheduled. Um, that can happen multiple times a day, depending on what your requirements as a company are. If you have a fiber line and you have no internet issues and you have a decent amount of data, we can run that backup multiple times a day, which gives you um, some sort of a versioning with regards to restoring your data um, as quickly as possible in case of a disaster. Uh, we set up um, backup versioning which is the retention period of your backups. Now that's similar to our normal Iontree platform, if you're familiar with that, which gives you up to two months individual backups. Now that can be multiple backups a day and then three months consolidated backups. So from any one of those backups, you'll be able to restore your full system to its uh, running capabilities once it's been um, implemented into our environment. We also do um, quarterly reports. Now, basically, in our ever-changing IT environment, the your data changes on a on a regular basis, as well as your software versioning. 
Now, we do those tests specifically for auditing purposes and also just to give you peace of mind that in the case of a disaster, your data will be available readily in our environment. Uh, there's, I'll go into more detail on the next slide, but basically um, disaster recovery as a service is a booming industry in, around the world, specifically because of the, the problems that happen with servers, not just from um, servers being stolen, but also from uh, server corruptions, uh, virus problems, etc. I want to just uh, uh, talk a little bit more about the quarterly disaster simulation events trends. And I think no this problem. is a really important point. And what we found when we did research and we we're thinking of actually um, creating this solution, because if you think about it, uh, Iron Tree, our core business, which is no longer our only business, as you guys all know, but our core business was, for a long time was, was online uh, data backup. And once you've got the data, um, it's, it's quite easy to, to extend that into a, a full disaster recovery solution. And, and what happens is that all we do is that the, 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 the data backup is split into two parts, the data as well as a full image of your server or the, the machine that actually is the machine that you want to protect against any disruptive events. But what's more important, I think the world is becoming more and more um, aware of governance and compliance and privacy legislation um, and I think we all know a lot about those kind of issues in this country specifically the compliance the governance um, and that kind of thing and what you need to do is if you've got a, a, a recovery situation <clears throat> you need to know that you can actually recover so if you have a disruption and when we did our research should we uh, implement a solution like this or not and we spoke to uh, uh, chief financial officers, financial directors, CEOs, um, IT managers, sort of decision makers at, at co companies, larger companies. And we asked them the question, do you have a disaster recovery plan? A lot of them said, yes, they do. And when we asked, well, where is it? They said, oh, well, it's, it's, it's in some file in a strong room that like, kind of gets pulled out once a year and given, given to the auditors. But they never actually test the process. So pretty much like I used to say, the definition of a backup is data that you can actually restore, not just a copy of your data. The definition of a disaster recovery solution is a solution that you know is robust and actually will work. And how do you know that it will work if you have a disruptive event? You have to simulate those events. So our solution, which I think, I wouldn't say it's unique, but it um, certainly provides a uh, um, feature that not many people do and that is a full quarterly simulation so Trent will take you through in the next slide the actual way that DRAS works but we do four annual simulations so you will know four times a year yes your disaster recovery solution works and if it doesn't work we'll pick it up in a simulation and we'll fix it and whether that means some data hasn't been backed up on that server or there's an IP address change or whatever the technical configuration is, we will pick that up in a simulation event. And what's also quite important is that we provide a full audit report. Now, why is that important? Well, as I said earlier, corporate governance is becoming quite a hot topic. And if you're a director of a company, you have a fiduciary duty to ensure that the company is sustainable in many facets. And how do you prove that you've fulfilled that fiduciary duty if, if there is an issue? If you've got an audit file with uh, reports that show that you've done everything that's, that's humanly possible to make sure your company is sustainable, uh, one of our uh, um, disaster recovery simulation reports is a really good thing to have in your, in your audit pack because it's a fully detailed time and date stamped report of every single procedure that we ran through to make sure that your disaster recovery uh, is is bulletproof. Okay, so Trent, I'm going to hand back to you for this slide. No problem. Thanks, David. Okay, so this is just basically an overview of how it works. Um, if you look at the picture on the left-hand side, it gives you a good breakdown of the basics of how the system works. And it's actually not that complicated if you think about it. As David was saying, because we have your data, and that data is in our environment, it becomes a lot easier for us to um, give you an environment 
that's exactly the same as your current environment. So just in terms of how it's kind of set up, um, the first thing we do is we deploy a, a client in your environment. That client then sits on the local machine or the hosted machine, depending on what kind of environment you're running. And that takes a full system backup. Now, when we say full system backup, we mean a full backup of your system, not just the files and folders. We mean the BIOS configuration, um, everything that entails us al allowing us to reboot your system in our environment exactly the way that it is configured in your environment. Um, as I said before, we do the backup scheduling, um, which is quite self-explanatory. Um, we also the, we've also got a lot of methods to notify you of the backups. And if you're familiar with our normal platform, we set up email notifications. Now, a lot of people they get lots of emails every day and uh, they might just wave over things like backups, but it's always good when you come in in the morning to see that your backup was successfully completed. This gives you a breakdown of what it actually backed up. So you can just have peace of mind that it's running on a daily basis. In the older kind of systems, you're not really sure if your data is up to date and you only realize once you have a problem that your data is out of date. So this, especially with disaster, where you want to change over to an environment where you as close to live as possible, it's important to know that your data is getting backed up. And that's just a way, besides the quarterly simulations, where you'll be aware of your current state of backups and disaster recovery as a service. Um, as David said, they do quarterly simulations and that uh, detailed audit report. So if you look at the image on the left-hand side, uh, we run a full system backup. That backup then gets restored into our environment. That is then set up on a dedicated VM with the identical resources of your current environment. And then we send you access to that environment. And when you log into that, it'll look exactly the same as the server or the machine inside your current environment. It'll have the data you're working on. It'll have the programs you're working on. None of that is reinstalled. So the configuration that you have set up doesn't have to be recreated, which really brings down the recovery time um, of that data, which allows you to log in, carry on working. Once you're done, we'll then back up that data and then restore it into your new environment once you have it up and running or your hardware has been replaced. Anything else you want to say on that, David? No, I think we'll move on to the next slide. Okay. So, I mean, just kind of to put it into perspective, what happens when you have a disruptive event? You arrive at work on Monday, whether it's someone stolen your server or there's been a fire or you've had a cyber attack and the whole thing is corrupt or your hard drive has crashed, whatever the reason, what do you do? If, you, if you're a customer, who do you call? If you're the, um, the IT support company, what do you do when your customer phones? And typically, as we all know, it is on a Monday morning. Uh, I've just got into the office. I can't work. What do you do? Uh, are the offsite backups in place? How do you how do you actually initiate a recovery event? Um, Trent, do you want to discuss the right hand side? Okay, so so a lot of people just talk about disaster recovery, and they say, "What if something happens?" And uh, do we really need this kind of solution? and uh, how long does this kind of solution takes. So that's why we're here to answer those questions. And also at the end, we'll give you a lot of question answers with anything that confuses you or that you need clarification on. So basically you get, get into the office on Monday and your servers are gone. Now, the first thing you do is panic. Now you think, how am I gonna get my environment up and running? Uh, I've got um, meetings this week. I've got all this data I need to recover. You speak to your IT manager, your IT manager says he has a backup from last week, which doesn't help you with your, your current environment. They have to order new servers. They have to get the full environment up and running again, or you've had some sort of corruption and that takes time. And it just disrupts your whole business which ultimately costs you a lot of money. Um, so if you look at, when we'll look at the pricing structure just now, the, the pricing that you get for this kind of solution is really reasonable. Um, it is targeted to medium to large enterprises, but there's packages that will suit small enterprises that um, is available. And because our system is all locally, the support that you get 
from our technicians is all local support. You don't have to phone a call center and sit for hours waiting for a call back. In the meantime, you're losing money and, and data. So um, basically, once we've restored your data into our environment and you have access to that environment, we have a basic RTO time of four hours, which is usually less than that. And when we set up the system in the first place, we get you to sign off that you can access that data from a disaster um, as soon as possible and that everything is running correctly. And we check up on that no matter how complicated your environment is. Um, you'll see our structure, our pricing structure is based on the amount of storage, not on the complexity of your environment. So we, we really help you make sure that you have peace of mind when a disaster happens and that it happens uh, as quick as possible without you having to worry. Um, another thing on the trading, I wanted to specify something else. A lot of people just think, okay, my server gets stolen. And once my server gets stolen, uh, if my server gets stolen, that's the only kind of scenario that uh, I'll need a disaster recovery. And another aspect that people forget about is uh, things like ransomware. Now, if you're using one of our other solutions, Panda, you shouldn't have any problem like that. They haven't had any issues with ransomware, um, any reported cases. But if you're not and you have your own environment and you log in on Monday and your computer is completely locked down, because we have uh, a different retention period and versioning of your backups, we will then be able to restore um, up to the last backup before the ransomware was has affected your system, which means you can be up and running with your ransomware free system in our environment and carry on working. So you don't get locked down by uh, malicious people or malicious companies trying to get access to your data. Anything yeah. you want to comment on there, Dan? No, I'll just move on. Okay. Cool. So there is simple steps how to get there. And whilst whilst you're reading through the slide, I just want to mention that uh, what we're offering the, now, right now is the disaster recovery as a service solution for Sage X3 and for Pastel Evolution. Uh, we are very interested in uh, talking to anyone who has uh, customers who have other um, ERP systems that are kind of um, uh, uh, very common in the market. So things, things like um, CISPRO and th those kind of solutions. Um, we're really only interested in, in creating uh, environments for commonly used ERP or other applications. And so we, we've built the system to be able to scale. So we've done a Sage X3 and we, we kind of limit it to pretty much vanilla type um, uh, installations. And the way we can offer this as an affordable solution and an efficient solution and a quick to recover solution is by having a template for different types of applications. And so we have a, a very detailed template for Sage X3 we, we're busy doing a proof of concept for Sage Evolution, which is uh, going to be quite simple. And we would build a template for any other commonly used application. And once we've got those templates, it's very easy to roll that out to customers who have similar environments. I know not everyone has the same environment, but as long as it's not an environment where there's um, bespoke um, add-ons and, and customized solutions, which would which would alter the template to a point where it's just not manageable. If there's just small um, differences, that we can cope with that. Is that a fair comment, Trent? Uh, yeah, in a point, um, we we can if we set up our POC, uh, POC properly, um, we can determine at the time before we start billing you or anything goes through if your full system can be recovered in our environment. And the only real technical problem that I foresee with a lot of our customers is just networking and the external networking setup. So uh, when we work together with a client, we then determine if it's capable or, or if it isn't capable of restoring in their environment, in our environment. Okay, okay. cool. All right. Um, what's also important to note, and, and Trent's going to discuss pricing and uh, stuff on the next slide, but um, do you have any clients who you think might be interested in this? We, as, as per the slide that you're looking at, we, we arrange a time to do a site visit. We draft a proof of concept um, for a proposal. Um, we don't bill until we've actually in, installed and 
done a first successful simulation. So there's not, you know, there's no real risk, but obviously we need to know that the customer's pretty serious about this before we spend all the time with the proof of concept and the first simulation. Okay, Trent, back to you. Okay, so now that now that you have a basic understanding of how the system works, um, we want to discuss just the pricing and requirements. Uh, a lot of companies with these kind of disaster recovery solutions, they won't give you a price until they've given you a full overview of your system and how technical your system is and um, how it's going to work in the environment and turnover times and etc. With us, we just build you on the data and the data used in this environment. We don't build you on the resources used, um, the um, complexities of your environment. Um, we help you sort that out and we sort that out in our environment, um, which is a different kind of solution to a lot of the other disaster recovery solutions. They're very specific to those kinds of things. So just mm -hmm. discussing on that, I don't want to get into too much detail about pricing. It's all listed on the screen. But basically, there's two big differences with regards to pricing. So we run on hard drives and NVMe cards, which is a type of SSD as shown on the right-hand side there. Now, the, you'll notice the pricing difference is quite large between the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And there's a reason for that. So if you think about normal hard drives and you know how normal hard drives are limited in their speed, we thought of a solution that will allow you to restore a lot more data in a shorter amount of time. Um, so if you see a 200 gig hard drive restore, um, it would take uh, half the time to restore a 400 gig on the right hand side. And that's specifically because we use NVMe cards. Now, if you're not familiar with the NVMe card, a lot of you guys have SSD cards in your, in your machines. And an SSD card is about five times faster than a hard drive with data access, with restoring, etc. Now an NVMe card is five times faster than an SSD drive. So you really get the fastest technology with regards to your data. As well as in our environment, if you have a server and it has multiple CPUs and multiple RAM, we then accommodate for that and give you the same um, feel as your environment by giving you the same resources, etc. Um, so obviously this is kind of system is targeted towards medium sized businesses and large corporations, but basically it's just anyone that has a system that needs a quick turnaround time and that needs to be live in case of any sort of disaster. Uh, our RTO is around four hours, but that's, um, that can be made uh, less depending on the amount of data that needs to be restored. Um, it's just basically as soon as a disaster happens, that data gets instantly restored mounted in the environment, and then you send the details to log in and carry on working. Cool. Thanks, Trent. So just to go into the target market, pretty self-explanatory, but I also thought I'd just make a point here. It's not, uh, the target market is not limited to organizations with a lot of people. It's really, it's the amount of data and the um, urgency to carry on business if there's a disruptive event. So we're seeing um, interest from like um, asset managers, financial services, um, uh, who, who don't have a lot of people, but their data uh, for processing transactions is critical. And we also have a lot of interest. We've got quite a few customers already who've got multiple servers. I think Trent, what's, what's our largest customer? Like 15 or 16 servers? Yeah, um, well, actually more than that, we've got a few that are over 20 servers and they linked internally and they have load balances and and uh, it takes some time just to replicate the environment in terms of networking, but the data and linkage between the, the servers is automated once we restore into our environment. And that's all detailed in our, in our plan. So when a disaster happens, um, everyone is aware of the structure of restoring that data, which obviously reduces the recovery time. Cool. Okay. All right. So what what we are going to do after the uh, sometime after the completion of this webinar, whether it's uh, later today or early tomorrow, we'll be sending out an email with a link to download this presentation, and within that will be um, the the slide with links where you can download 
uh, blog po post and, and maybe more importantly, the draft checklist, which is quite a good um, selling tool as well if, if you want to go talk to your customers about this. Um, also important to note that uh, our account managers, Byron and Shannon and Elzan, are definitely available to consult with you or to go with you to larger clients to talk to them about the solution. And that's where we find most of our um, success is where we actually get involved from the start with the initial customer engagement to actually just dis discover whether this is a solution which would be valuable for the customer or not. So like everything else we do in Iontree, we're very keen to help you in that process. Okay. Uh, so kind of that, that's the end of our presentation. If you have any questions, um, Trent is definitely available to answer them. So let's just see Trent if anyone submits a question. And thanks for attending. Uh, thanks, guys. Um, you can also uh, contact me um, if you have any more in-depth questions or you'd like some sort of understanding that you weren't sure about. Um, I don't see any questions at the moment. Uh, if you guys think of anything, I'm free to talk anytime and we will be able to help you with any of your requirements. Okay, I don't, still, don't see any questions. Uh, have we, have we left anything out that we should have mentioned, Trent? I don't think so. No, I, I don't think so either. It's pretty sh uh, straightforward of how it works. Um, it's mm. just how it um, interacts with uh, client environments and how it can be uh, a great benefit, peace of mind, and uh, obviously help with your auditing. So that's all I can think of. Okay. All right, doesn't seem like there are any questions. So thank you everybody for attending and we'll be sending out notification of our next, next webinar, which will be in two weeks time. Uh, I'm sure uh, we'll send the, the details of that in the next uh, few days. Thank Thanks you very everyone. much. Thanks everyone. Cheers.